Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome again back for another reaction. So here we have a Nigerian billionaire uh, residing in uh, Switzerland and he is giving a little insight on the realities of what it takes to be a successful businessman in Switzerland. So I just want you to listen to him and I will give my reaction at the end. Fair use, fair use. Hopefully we don't get flagged for this video. <laughs> Making this video made me realize doing business as a black man in a country like Switzerland comes with a lot of challenges. He shared a few of them with me. You're a business person and a black person, so how are you treated knowing that you are not a native person here? Like when you're trying to transact business, do you feel any racism or something like that? There's racism everywhere. So everywhere I go, the rooms I go into, the meetings I go into, I'm the only black. Beverly Hills of Zurich, Kusnacht. Yeah. I'm the only black and people are shocked because but it's nice too because people are not expecting it. Nice. Who's so, this guy? You know. What are you? What, what are you doing in this neighborhood? Exactly. Yeah. And I'll tell you something. Since I started driving this car or the Lamborghini or whatever, um, when the when the police see me, they respect me. They just let me drive because they don't know if I'm a star. Yes, I, of course I'm a star. <laughs> <laughs> I love this challenge when I go and walk into the room and somebody underestimates me and then you prove them wrong and then i prove them wrong i tell people your color does not make you inferior it's your brain yeah what i think of where i see when, when we sit down in room to to solve problems once they're talking about problems i'm already seeing the solution yeah your skin has nothing my, to do with my that. skin has nothing i see solution it's about who you're made of the stuff you're made of yeah, made yeah. of right back in the day you're walking on the street here an old ladies coming or German, she comes in, she sees a black man, she crosses the street. You sit in the tram in front of an old lady, she stands up and gets up and moves to the other side. And one day I was like pissed, I was like, no, you won't do that to me. So she I sat down, the old, the old lady got up and went straight to the door. I, I stood up, I almost stood close to her. She moved to another corner, I moved to another corner. The next stop, she got down, I got down, I said, oh, young man, why are you following me? <laughs> I'm like, I'm not following you, I'm free. Why are you running away? Some of them might think, oh, you rub off that skin, now that color is going to come off. You know, you don't know. Every time you walk in the streets, the police will just stop you and check you. Because housewife Peter, it means your ID, please. And they'll come only to you. You're in the train. Lots of people in the train, they walk all the way down just, just to you. you. I remember one time where I was stopped at Munich train station in Germany. And I didn't have an ID. I was already a German citizen, right? I didn't have my ID. I had a bank card. And they, they checked it and they said, no. They have to take me into their office in the station. So, six guys. Only black guy. No chance. So, they said that they had to undress me and search for drugs. My, my a hole to see if I had drugs hidden there. I'm like, no, I said, you, you won't do it. They said, no, they don't have to do it. They wore gloves, nylon gloves, right? I'm ready to go action. I said, it's either I die or so one of you is going to die. But your, your fingers not getting into my ass. I'm German. And these guys have checked all my, I didn't have my ID, but they checked, I had my bank card, they said whatever, I spoke German with to them. They've also cross-checked my data in the data bank to know it's me. You have personal questions you ask and everything, this, that, 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 they know it's me. But they think I, I'm, I'm, I'm into drugs. But you, you have all my history records, I've been here for how many years? I have nothing to do with drugs, so why are you trying to search me? What you will notice is the confidence they indomitable confidence of a nigerian when a nigerian puts himself to do something i mean he gives it 100 percent and a lot of people get intimidated by that that is why you see sometimes people don't want to that's why you see at times people don't want to hang around nigerians or people don't want to you know compete with nigerians because their mindset is that of nothing is impossible and as long as there's life i can do whatever so that is, a, that is a mindset that is built from childhood based on the difficulties, the challenges of the day-to-day -day life in Nigeria. And it's like, you know, it's like you go for a training and by the time you're done, you are so prepped for life that you see no obstacle. When other people are telling you, man, it's impossible to deny you, it's like, man, get out of the way. He breaks the door and what gets in. And that is why they are able to accomplish so much. That is why they are able to accomplish so much, you know? And I really, really respect that. 
and I really, really respect that. This is a young man that, you know, went to Switzerland, did what he was doing, hustled, stacked up his money, and every opportunity that came his way, he jumped on it. He didn't feel like, listen, I'm from Nigeria, I'm not supposed to do this. Like, sometimes you talk with people and they're so limited. You, you could basically see like this man, listen, bro, he wouldn't make it more than the nine to five job. But with my Nigerian friends, like, it's always, it's always was the next thing to do. Okay, I got, I got, I got, I got a thousand. Okay, how do I make ten thousand? I got ten thousand. How do I make a hundred thousand? I got a hundred thousand. How do I hit a million? There's always something to do. There is a ceiling of excellence. It's always something that has to be surpassed. And I think that is just amazing. And that is why I respect Nigerians so much. He, he doesn't care about what job he is doing. He's more focused on where he is heading to in life. And even if he's doing the most ungrateful job, he knows the objective is to do this, learn, raise enough money, move to the next step. They also they have that mindset of ownership. I can tell you right now the country where I live, when we're talking about ownership of businesses, land, property, amongst the properties or the businesses owned by Africans, Nigerians, Nigerians own 98% of anything African within this country. So from the food we are eating, the boutiques, the nightclubs, the, the import export, uh, uh, you know, areas where we do pack our containers and everything, Nigerians do own it. And I'm not talking about, they are not leasing it. They bought the land within this country in Europe and they own it. I mean, bro, you can't, you can't hate on their hustle. You can't. You can't. If you want to be somebody, hook up with a Nigerian. And that doesn't mean Nigerians are better than others, but there is that spirit of competition, that drive, that always pushes them above their limits. And if you want to succeed in life, you must always understand you can't set yourself limits. You must always have bigger dreams. You must always dream big. And then work hard, smart, and see where the universe takes you. Imagine what somebody tells you, I like when people doubt me. I like when I woke up in a room and people think like I'm not supposed to be there. That gives me that drive to prove them wrong. Imagine going, imagine going against somebody like that is what he wants to make the impossible possible. Man, imagine being in somebody's country and bullying the person. <laughs> <laughs> the only people I've seen doing this thing are Nigerians. Imagine during the African Nations Cup, Nigerians, a lot of countries had these like Twitter spaces, right? Nigerians made sure any country that said shit about them, they went into their Twitter space, they infiltrated it and bullied them. <laughs> so imagine a woman sees you, you're sitting in the train, she wakes up due to her her backward mindset, she thinks she's better than you, move to another seat. And then the Nigerian, other Africans will be like, oh, it's okay, or other people, the Nigerian is like, what? Bro, I'm sitting where you're sitting. You move, he moves to the same place. Like teasing you in your own country, just to let you know he would not take no BS from anybody. You gotta love that, man. You gotta love that. Of course, the racism in Europe is clear. The difficulties we face are clear. But the most important things are the way you handle things, the maturity with which you handle things and that ability to let people know you will not let them abuse you. I know some people feel intimidated by police, but as for me, that is not, that is not a possibility. I respect people. I respect the country in which I am. I respect the laws, but I will not let you defy me or I will not let you abuse my rights because guess what? Your people are in my country too. So if your people can be in my country and being treated right, I expect to be treated the same in your country. Imagine now the police profiling him, telling him they've got to search his a-hole because they think he's doing something illegal. But he stood his ground. He, called, he, he respected the rules. He stayed in line. But more so, he had to let them treat him with dignity because that is what life is about. It's all about treating people with respect and dignity. And I think that is that goes full circle. That goes full circle.
but that is those are aspects of a nigerian dude like he is in a different country and he tells them in their police office you can't you can't touch my a hole especially we africans like we men we don't that's not something we do how will you get into my you know but touch my behind that is unacceptable and he made it clear it's either me or you it's either me or you and the people had to back off that is called self-respect that is called standing your ground that is called moving with dignity and those are aspects every human being must have you must have self-respect you must know when you stand your ground even if you have to pay the ultimate price and you must have dignity but more so you must understand there is no place like home so when you're moving or you're about to invest in another country make sure before you invest one million you've invested five six ten million in your own country so should things go left you can be able to have something to fall back on that's what i had to you know that was just my take on this video get into the comment section let me know what you think and uh, see you on the next video but shout out to steven doku i hope i'm not uh, messing up his name but it's somebody i really love you should check his channel out i'll try to put his channel in the comment section check him out because he does an amazing job his videos are amazing and i would recommend anybody trying to invest in real estate to check your brother anybody trying to re uh, invest in real estate in africa to check his channel out because he is the sum like he sets the bar so high his video quality you know the standard of everything he does it's so amazing and he is a nigerian so that is what we call the nigerian excellence okay cheers see you on the next one